I'm Dan Fleisch, and this video is about math intensive classes. By math intensive classes, I don't mean math classes. Instead, I'm talking about classes in which mathematics is a tool, in some cases an extremely important tool, but math is not the main subject of the course. Math intensive courses usually include classes in the physical sciences, such as physics, chemistry, astronomy, earth science, also many types of engineering and computer science courses, but you may also run into math intensive courses in other subjects, such as economics, business, certain life science courses, and even sociology or psychology. In courses like this, math can play a critical supporting role, and that's why it's important that you get help early in the term if you're having trouble with the math. If you don't get help when you need it, you're very likely to spend a great deal of time struggling with the mathematical aspects of the course, and you may still end up getting a poor grade because the math has distracted you from learning the core concepts of the subject. It always breaks my heart to hear students who are having difficulties in one of my physics or astronomy courses say, but I spent hours working on the homework problems, and when I asked them exactly what they were doing during that time, it turns out that they were stuck on some bit of mathematics and never even got to the physical concepts that the problem was really about. I feel like those students are trying to build a house without understanding how their tools work. To overcome this kind of trouble, it's essential that you not give in to the feeling that I can't do math or I'll never be any good at math because research has shown that a negative attitude about your ability can have a very damaging effect on your performance. This is especially problematic for women because for some reason more young women than men come to believe that their math abilities are somehow substandard, even those who are every bit as capable as their classmates. Unfortunately, you can't just wish away your math insecurity, but you can decide not to let your doubts stop you from getting to work on learning to use mathematics as a tool. And where do you start? I think a great starting point is to look at equations in the right way. By that I mean that you should not think of equations as something you plug numbers into in order to get a result. Equations can certainly do that, but that's not their real value. Their value comes about because they express a relationship between some quantities and those relationships can tell you a great deal about how the world works. Using mathematical equations, you can learn things as different as how mass is related to energy and how money is related to interest rate and time. To understand those relationships, you should learn not to plug in numbers in place of the variables until the very last steps of working a problem, even if you know those numerical values from the start. Lots of students have had such a bad experience with algebra that they can't wait to plug in a number for every variable, so they don't even write down the equation until they've plugged in some numbers. After all, once you've plugged in numbers, your calculator can do the rest, right? Actually, no. Once you plug in numbers, you can no longer see the relationships between quantities that are the real usefulness of an equation. When you're solving a problem, you want to be able to see those relationships for as long as possible. Sure, at the very end, it's fine to plug in numbers to get a numerical result if that's what the problem calls for. But up to that point, resist the urge to plug in. Here's an example of the value of preserving the relationship between quantities in an equation. When I first learned Newton's second law, I was presented with the equation version of the statement force equals mass times acceleration. That equation looks like this. Like many students, I couldn't wait to plug in whatever values I had for some of these variables, and I had absolutely no idea why in the world you would want to multiply a mass, which is the amount of stuff in an object, by an acceleration, which is the change in the object's velocity. But I figured, what the hell? I've got some values, so I'll plug them in. Only later did I realize that I would have been way better off if I had taken just a few minutes to write this equation like this without plugging in numbers. Why is this better? Because it shows a relationship between acceleration, force, and mass that makes physical sense to me. That relationship is both easy to understand and incredibly useful. If you want to know 
How much an object will accelerate when you apply a force to it? Just divide the force by the object's mass. Since acceleration and force are both in the numerator, the bigger the force applied to the object, the bigger the acceleration of that object, as long as the mass hasn't changed. Double the force, you get double the acceleration. But if you apply the same force F to an object with more mass, you'll have smaller acceleration because mass is in the denominator. So if you double the mass, you get half the acceleration for the same applied force. This is what I mean when I say you should understand the relationship expressed by the equation. Imagine trying to understand that relationship if you immediately plug in numbers and get something like this. Sure, your calculator can divide two numbers and tell you that a equals 5 in this case, but what does that tell you about the general relationship between acceleration, force, and mass? Nada. Knowing that a equals 5 under the specific conditions of one homework problem will be of no value to you on an exam, but understanding this relationship will be your best hope of solving new problems. Your understanding of Newton's second law will be even better if you write it like this, in which this Greek symbol sigma tells you to add up all the forces acting on the object since it's the total force that determines the object's acceleration. Even better, once you understand that force and acceleration are vectors, that is, they both have direction as well as magnitude, you can write the relationship like this. Now this is a really useful version of Newton's second law. And, like most equations, it's completely understandable with a little effort. The trick is to take it step by step, from some starting point to the final equation, in which the thing you're trying to find is all by itself on the left side of the equal sign. Now, if you're thinking, sure, this is easy for a simple equation with only three variables, but what about more complicated equations? I'm happy to tell you that the same approach of looking at the meaning of each piece of an equation works for even more complex mathematical relationships. For example, here's one of Maxwell's equations of electromagnetics. And if you take the time to look at each term, you'll see that it tells you that a circulating magnetic field is produced by an electric current and by a changing electric field. Likewise, the Schrodinger equation of quantum mechanics looks a bit ghastly at first, but breaking down the terms shows you that the change of a quantum wave function over time depends on its curvature over space and the potential energy of the system. Okay, why have I taken the time to go through all this? Just to give you a sense of how an equation can really be a tool to help you understand a relationship, and even if an equation looks complicated at first, it's not nearly so intimidating if you break it down into pieces. And once you understand the relationship between quantities, you're in a much better position to be able to solve problems involving those quantities. Of course, this is not a magical recipe for doing well in a math intensive class. It's going to take effort, and that means you're going to have to put in time if you want to do well. But few things in life are as rewarding as taking on a difficult challenge and persevering. So the effort will be worth it. Look, there are plenty of things in the world to be afraid of, but math is not one of them. So hang in there and be sure to get help whenever you need it. Thanks very much for your time.